Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Yong Jin Kim from Korea. Nice to meet you all. And this is final session of 10 sessions of GBR part. In this final session, I will be talking about treatment flow after extraction in molar area. I will introduce some technical tips for successful immediate implant placement in molar area and then I will talk about technical tips about for socket preservation in molar area. Same as anterior side, I always use this simplified socket classification. I introduced this simplified socket classification in last session. Type 1, type 2, type 3 socket. We, this simplified socket classification was introduced by Nicholas Elian for anterior extraction socket. But we can apply this socket classification in the molar area. Let's see. This is a type of socket. Sound buccal bone and sound soft tissue. This is a type 1 socket as shown in this slide. As shown in these two cases, there was no buccal bone defect and soft tissue quality is so good. No soft tissue recession. This is type 1 socket in molar. How about type 2? Same as anterior type 2 socket. Sound soft tissue but buccal bone recession. In this case, we can classify this socket as type 2 socket. In the, as shown in the left side photo, soft tissue is there was no soft tissue recession, but there was severe buccal bone defect. So this is a type 2 socket. Type 3 socket, gingiva recession and bone recession. As I said in the last session, so because soft tissue always follow the underlying bone. So soft tissue recession means bone recession. So this is type 3 socket. Based on this socket classification, we can decide our treatment flow. So after extraction, we should check the buccal bone defect. If there is no buccal bone defect, this is type 1 socket. Only type 1 socket has sound buccal bone. Type 2, type 3 socket has buccal bone defect. In the type 1 socket, we can place implant right after extraction, same as anterior side. So in the last session, socket place patient was introduced. Socket placement, socket class, socket preservation can be considered in type 1 socket. Right? Can you guys all remember? But in the molar area, in the type 1 socket, we don't need to perform socket preservation. Why? In anterior area, the labial bone is quite thin. So this thin labial bone will be gone because of bundle bone theory. Because of blood supply loss, this thin labial bone will be gone. So we to maintain the volume, extraction socket volume, we should put the graft material to maintain the volume of extraction socket only in the anterior area. But posterior area, buccal bone and palatal bone is so thick. So we don't need to pack the bone, especially when the extraction socket is type 1. So socket, class, socket preservation can be considered in type 2 or type 3 socket. Anyway, if there is a bone deep, buccal bone defect, this is type 2 or type 3 socket. So in some situations, we can place the implant immediately and then we should do GBR. But some situation, socket preservation can be considered. But some situation, delayed implant placement should be considered. So this is my common treatment flow after extraction in the molar area. So let's talk about this in this right, final session. So first, let's talk about molar immediate implant placement. 
Okay, uh, male dentist, worry about, worry about the success rate of immediate implant placement in the molar area. And this is a research about that. This is a research about survival and success rate of implant placed immediately into pre pre-extraction socket. So, as shown in this slide, annual phase rate of immediate implant was only 0.82%. Two-year survival rate was around 98%. So, quite good treatment modality. So, we don't need to worry about survival and success rate of molar immediate implant. So, this no need to worry about that. But, in molar area, especially for immediate implant placement, there are some disadvantages, the technically sensitive procedure, and also site morphology of molar extraction socket may complicate optimal placement and anchorage. And some situation, surgical procedure, additional surgical procedure, GBR, for example, GBR may be required. So, technique sensitive. So, from now on, let's talk about technical tips for immediate implant placement in molar area. Same as anterior immediate implant placement, extraction is very, very important. So, a traumatic extraction should be done. And also, planning surgery, if possible. Now, same as anterior extraction socket, we should use periotome or luxator. Luxator is a luxating elevator. Don't use conventional elevator. Please use luxating elevator to cut the periodontal ligament. Same as anterior extraction. But unlike the anterior teeth, mola has several root, three or two. So we should do sectioning. Sectioning means tooth separation. So this tooth separation should be done according to the number of root. In the upper mola, we should separate the tooth into three pieces. Mesovocal, distovocal, and palatal. In the lower molar, set, we should separate two or sometimes three because some lower molar has three loops. Anyway, two separation should be done according to the number of root. And then after sectioning, we should do a traumatic extraction by using periotone we can extract the root, we can separate the root easily. And then, don't use normal elevator. Please use luxating elevator, luxator. And after extraction, we should remove the residual granulation tissue completely with a surgical tread in the hand manual method. But, because of site morphology of molar extraction socket, complete removal of granulation tissue might be difficult. So, to remove the granulation, residual granulation tissue completely, some situation we should use this diamond bar, high speed diamond bar or low speed diamond bar to remove the residual granulation tissue. But some situation, if the defect, the extraction socket is quite big, and also extraction socket has, if, if extraction socket has no septal bone, at that time, we can use this special drill to remove, to grind off the entire granulation tissue from the inner socket wall. In this case, I use crest remover from asset kit. Asset kit is a specialized Rich split kit from Austin. Inside this asset kit, we can find this special drill 
to grind the irregular crest bone. The name of this bar is crest remover. This crest remover is quite good to remove and grind all the granulation tissue from the extraction socket. So, to summarize, first, sectioning of molar should be done to perform a traumatic extraction. After sectioning, by using the periotome and luxating elevator, we can remove the root rest easily. And then, we should remove the granulation tissue completely with such calculus with manual method. And some situation, when the granulation tissue adhere to the extraction socket firmly, strongly, at that time, we should use high-speed diamond bar or low-speed diamond bar or sometimes crest remover, special drill. This is preparation for immediate implant placement in the molar area. And then, when placing implant, especially when drilling for immediate implant placement after extraction, the drilling position is very, very important. As you know, we should place implant in ideal position. So let's talk about the position of immediate molar implant placement. Let's see this. Septal bone is located at the center of lacerative crown, right? So if you can put your implant at the, along the septal bone, you can place implant at the center of lacerative crown, like this. So septal bone is quite important. Septal bone is a good reference point for initial drilling. So this is an ideal position of mandibular postmolar immediate implant, good placement, along the septal bone. The diameter of molar implant should be greater than 4.5 mm, at least 4.5. And this is the position of mandibular second molar immediate implant placement here. So when placing implant in the complete healed side in mandibular second molar area, very, very it is very, very difficult to find out ideal initial drilling point because in this situation, we cannot find out, we cannot use posterior reference tooth. In other words, because there is no posterior reference tooth, it may be, it must be difficult to find out ideal initial drilling point. But if we can place implant right after extraction in the mandibular second molar area, we can find out septal bone. So if we can drill, we can make an initial drilling point along the septal bone. We can put our sec mandibular second molar implant in ideal position easily. But there is some anatomical variation, especially in the mandibular second molar area. Fusion of medial and distal loop. Yeah, let's compare mandibular second molar and mandibular post molar. You, most of cases, mandibular postmolar has two separated tooth, but some situation in mandibular second molar has fused root, like this. In this situation, how can you make a drilling? Where should we drill in this situation? Let's see, in this case, here, Usually, the root apex of medial root is located at the center of lacerative crown, as shown in these cases. Based on my experience, the root apex of medial root, the apex of medial root is located at the center of lacerative crown in most of cases. Here, this is a root apex of medial root. Here, this is apex of major root. Usually, this apex of major root is located at the center of lacerative crown. So, in this situation, especially, sorry, when the major root 
and this talut is fused together. You should start the drilling from the from at the apex of major loop. This is ideal method. So, so to summarize, when placing implant in mandibular second molar area immediately, if you can find out the septal bone, it you can you should drill through the septal bone. But the major root is fused to the distal root. If there is a fusion of major root and the distal root placed in plant along the major root, or you should start the drilling at the apex of major root. So when placing two implant, number six and number seven, first and second molar area immediately. This is ideal position. If you can find septal bone, you should can drill. And you, through the septal bone, you can play along the septal bone. This is ideal position. Because the septal bone is located at, located at the center of restorative crown. Okay. If you can find septal bone, put your implant along the septal bone. In this way, you can put your implant at the center of the restorative crown. For some situation, if you cannot drill through the septal bone, you can move your two implants to the medial side. Play, place implant along the in the medial loop. By splitting these two implants, we can make ideal size and shape of crown because usually in the mandibular second molar area the crown, restorative crown should be slightly smaller than natural tooth so when considering the crown size when considering the implant crown size you can place implant in the major root it's only for only when placing implant, two implant in number six and number seven area. Let's see, in this case, I place four implant in the mandib lower jaw, right after extraction, both first and second molar area. Here, yeah? because of severe periodontitis, I extracted both lower molars, and then I place four implant. This is a pre op portal here. Right after extraction, here, I placed two implants along the medial root. Medial root. Medial extraction socket. Yeah. And then I fill the gap with allogenic bone. So, the kind, I will talk about the kind of bone graft material later. Here, on the left side, same. As right side, I placed two implants in the medial loop. The position of implant was not so bad. Here. Okay. Two months later, final cross disease was fabricated. By splinting two implants together, we can make, I could make ideal shape and size of Prosthesis here. One year follow up. Yeah. There was no marginal bone rejection and good maintenance here. This is a portal one year after implant placement. Yeah, let's see the lateral view. Yeah. The size of crown and contour of crown was so nice. Here, yeah. two years follow up. Panorama. In 3-5 area, left to lower second premolar area, I put one more implant because of severe periodontitis in this case. Anyway, good maintenance of marginal bone. Yeah, this is the PA. There was no mechanical complication. Right? Here, until now, we talked about lower molar immediate implant placement especially for the position. 
Let's move on to the maxillary molar, upper molar. So upper molar has three root, major buccal, distal buccal, and palatal. So we can get the septal bone. So same as lower molar, septal bone is located at the center of lacerative crown in buccolingual direction and major distal direction. So in other words, if we can put our implant along the septal bone, we can put our implant at the center of lacerative crown in major distal direction and buccolingual direction. So like this. Accord, but <coughs> according to the degree of di root divergence between buccal root and the palatal root, we can expect the amount of septal bone and we can expect the shape of septal bone. Let's see. More divergence. So more septal bone. We can expect. So after extraction, please check the root divergence. And then we can expect the amount of basal area of septal bone. Here. Yeah. So by placing implant in the septal bone, we can get initial stability in the upper jaw. Let's think about the bone quality of posterior maxilla. Usually, posterior maxilla has very poor bone quality. In most of the cases, D3 or D4 bone. But septal bone is almost cortical bone. So by using this septal bone, we can get good initial stability, even though we will place implant in the posterior molar, upper molar area. So after placing implant like this, we should consider this gap, same as anterior extraction socket. So when managing the gap in the anterior extraction socket, we should consider two things, gap distance and then labial bone thickness. Because implant itself cannot hold the labial bone because the thin labial bone will be gone because of blood loss, blood supply loss. But unlike the anterior side, the molar area, the buccal bone thickness is thick enough. So we should consider only gap distance. So when managing this gap, we usually report this jumping distance as I said in the last session. Once again, this jumping distance is a maximum gap distance which can be fielded with patient own bone without any bone grafting and membrane placement. So this jumping distance is known as 2.0 mm. So when the gap is less than 2.0 mm, osteoblast can jump to implant from the extraction socket. So we don't need to pack the bone, but when the gap distance is less than 2.0 mm, the osteoblast bone points that cannot jump to implant. So there will be some gingival tissue or soft tissue migration. So to get complete osseo integration, we should pack the bone, especially when the gap size is greater than 2.0 mm. But as shown in this research, Dr. Dennis Tarnow reported this case. He placed the implant in the fresh extraction socket, but the type socket type was type 1, extraction socket was type 1. But as shown in this case, despite the large gap size, the gap distance was greater than 3.0 mm. We end without primary plaque closure, a bone graft, and barrier membrane. He could get successful bone healing and complete osseo integration, as shown in this histological evaluation. Dennis Tarnow, he placed implant in extraction socket. So as shown in photo, the gap size was greater than 3. He didn't pack the bone graft material and he didn't place membrane. 
and he didn't perform climate closure. But as time goes by, there was successful soft tissue and bone regeneration. And then he, then Stana, removed this implant along with surrounding bone to compound and to check the quality of ocean integration. As shown in this slide, there was successful ocean integration. But this is just a single case report. But many researchers stated that it appears that the greater the gap size, the greater the potential for incomplete feel of the defect. Many research emphasized the importance of bone grafting, especially when the gap size is greater than 2.0 mm. Please remember this one. The greater the gap size, the greater the potential for incomplete bone peeling. So, when the gap size is greater than 2.0 mm, it should, will be much, much better to pack the bone. So, this patient referred to my clinic because of poor soft tissue healing between two implants. These two implants were placed right after extraction, but post dentist didn't manage the gap even though the gap distance was greater than 2. So, there was some soft tissue migration, soft tissue infiltration between two implants. So, as shown in this photo, right side photo, there was some soft tissue regeneration between two implants. So, this, in this situation, these two implants have high susceptibility to perimplantitis because of deep pocket formation between two implants. So I removed this implant and I removed the soft tissue between two implants and I placed two implants again to make complete ocell integration to decrease the pocket depth. Anyway, to avoid this situation, we should pack the bone especially when the defect size, gap size is greater than 2.0. So what kinds of bone graft material to manage the gap, to fill the gap in molar area? Allogenic bone or genogenic bone or alloplast? Which one is better? In anterior area, I recommend it. Genogenic bone, non-reservable genogenic bone. Why? The main concern in anterior area is volume maintenance. So to maintain the volume, non-reservable genogenic bone graft material should be used for the first time. But how about molar? As I said in the beginning, according to the graft material, the healing pattern is different. So, when using, after using autogenous and allogenic human bone, regeneration can occur. In other words, this allogenic and autogenous bone graft material will be replaced by patient's own bone completely. So we can make patient's own bone. But unlike the allogenic bone and autogenous bone, this genogenic bone graft material is non resorbable Instead of resorption, this Genogenic bone graft material will conduct new bone formation around and inside this bone graft material particle. But this genogenic bone graft material cannot make direct contact with implant. In other words, direct oseo integration is impossible between genogenic bone graft material and implant. So let's see, in this case, Two implants were placed right after extraction in right mandible. And then, genogenic bone graft material was placed to pack the gap, fill the gap here. Three months later, final impression taking was done, but you can see this genogenic bone graft material particle. No unreservable, unreserved 
General General Congress must develop particular around the implant surface. So, as time goes by, this General General Congress material particle will not resolve. Will not be resolved. So, I don't like this situation. One year follow-up. Can you see? Now, you guys all find out the General General Congress material, uh, material here, here, not harmonious with patient bone marrow. Sorry. Here, you know, some situation, we may experience this kind of complication after filling the gap with the genogenic bone material in the molar area. Here, you know, I placed the three implant right after extraction. In second, second molar area, I filled the gap with genogenic bone. Three months later, final process disease was fabricated and delivered. Can you see this general congress material here? But five years later, five, more, five years after implant placement, this patient visited my clinic because of recurrent and frequent gingiva swelling and bleeding and post discharge. Here, can you see? As, I, as we all know, Posterior implant has high, higher susceptibility to peri-implantitis. Under the inflammatory situation, osteoclast reaction will be increased. Osteoclast reaction activity will be increased. So osteoclast should remove, resolve the bone. So marginal bone resorption or crystal bone resorption should occur. But this genogenic bone cluster material is not human bone, so human osteoclast cannot resolve this genogenic bone. So this genogenic bone cluster material just can play the play the role as a as just like a sequester. Just disrupts it from the implant surface because human osteoclast could not resolve this genogenic bone. So, because, because of this unresolved genogenic graft material, there was severe gingival irritation. So, patient feel some pain and bleeding. So, after removing this genogenic bone graft material particle, gingival inflammation was subsided. So, to avoid this situation in molar implant, exposed or distance part of implant should be covered with regenerative bone. So, when performing the GBR to cover the exposed implant, sandwich bone augmentation technique should be emphasized. Over the exposed implant area, Regenerative bone graft material, autogenous or allogenic bone, should be used to make patient own bone. But the main disadvantage of this human bone is higher resorption rate. So to compensate this high resorption rate of human bone, at the same time, to make ideal contour, we should place genogenic bone covering the, this human bone. But after impl immediate implant placement in the molar area, when, pack, when managing this gap, we should use geno allogenic bone graft material instead of genogenic bone. So my first choice in the molar area to fill the gap, autogenous or allogenic bone graft material, human bone, here, yeah, after immediate implant placement. So these two implants were placed along the septal bone, so position in buckling direction and major distal direction was so nice. And then I used allogenic bone, human bone, to fill the gap. Because the gap distance was greater than two. So more than two millimeter gap should be filled with the bone graft material. And then primary closure was done to minimize displacement of particulated graft material. Here, 
But instead of suturing, we can use wide diameter healing abutment. Ostem has wide Ostem provide wide diameter healing abutment. 7.0 and 8.0. In here, I place implant right after extraction. And then get peeling with allogenic bone graft material was done. And then to seal this soft tissue hole completely, I use the 8.0 diameter healing abutment. So you can ask OSTEP. And then for more adaptation, for more sealing of gingiva around healing abutment, horizontal matrix suture should be considered. Here, in this case, I placed implant immediately in the second molar area, lower second molar area. I used, I connected 7.0 millimeter diameter, diameter healing abutment. So, interpret, simple interrupted suture was done to secure the papilla. But between healing abutment and buccal marginal gingiva, there was some gap. So through this gap, particulated bone graft material could be migrated. So I made horizontal matrix incision. I uh, sorry, I made horizontal matrix suture on the buccal flap, buccal to lingual and lingual to buccal, and I made a knot on the buccal flap. In this way, this buccal flap could be adapted to the healing of Atman. So I could reduce the gap here. So this is my common sequence. After two sectioning, a traumatic section was done. And then initial drilling through the septal bone with the side cutting drill or stem. And then paper drill. Plamnist extraction and plamnist implant placement or so in Thai bones of cat, only in the Thai bones of cat. And then now I'm placing 5.0 diameter PS3 implant and then depth control. From the when considering the biology with this in the molar area. From the most apical portion of buccal gingiva to the top of implant, 3 to 4 mm. But anterior area, 4 to 5. In the anterior area, deep placement is much better than shallow implant placement because thin labial bone will be gone. But in here, molar area, buccal bone thickness is quite thick. So no need to worry about buccal bone re vertical resorption. So from the gingiva, 3 to 4 mm deeper. And then I pack the bone because the gap distance was greater than 2. And then for buccal gingiva adaptation to the healing of Batman, now I'm making a horizontal matrix suture. In this case, I connected 8.0 mm diameter healing of Batman. But there was some gap between healing of Batman and buccal marginal gingiva. So to get gingival adaptation to the healing of Batman, horizontal matrix suture was done. Panorama MPA. So when placing implant. When drilling implant for when drilling and when placing implant, we should engage septal bone. By engaging the septal bone, we can get appropriate primary stability and we can place implant in ideal position. So don't forget septal bone. 
So to make initial drilling point along the septal bone, in most of cases, we should use this side cutting drill. But when the crestal top of septal bone, sorry, when the top of septal bone is quite sharp, we may experience this situation like this. Because of very sharp and irregular septal bone top, the side cutting drill or lens drill could be, can be slip like this. Drill slippage. So some situation you can, you will make a drilling along the medial root or sometimes distal root. How can you avoid this situation? If you put implant in the, along the medial root, especially in postmolar immediate implant placement, what will happen? Long cantilever will occur. So bending moment or off-axis load will occur. So we may experience this kind of mechanical complication. The main enemy of implant is cantilever. We should decrease the cantilever, length of cantilever. We should decrease off-axis load. Occlusal load should be distributed through the long axis of implant. In to get to to get that to get that we should place implant at the center of restorative crown. So some dentists recommend this method direct drilling through the root. Drilling should be done before extraction. But I don't like this method. I never follow this method. But some dentists recommend this method. I don't want to recommend this method because this method has high risk of remaining too pregnant. Pregnant, interfering with the process of osseo integration. After grinding the root, root pregnant can be remain, can be left within the bone. So this root pregnant can interfere the osseo integration. And also direct drilling through the root will cause blunting of implant drill. So I don't like when considering the longevity of drill, this technique is not so good. So instead of this technique, I want to introduce my technical tip. How can you place implant along the septal bone? Especially when the septal bone is quite sharp. This is my technical tip. I usually use 2.0 millimeter inner diameter trapine bar. This is a trapine bar with 2.0 millimeter inner diameter. Outer diameter is around 2.8 to 3.0. Initial drilling with trapine bar is my method. And then drilling with taper drill. And then final drilling and implant placement. In this way, we can avoid drill slippage, especially when the septal bone is so sharp. Let's see, in this case, I place Second molar, I place implant in immediate, immediately in the light lower second molar area. Here, before and extraction. As I said, the septal bone is quite sharp and irregular. So if I drill with lens drill or side cutting drill, this lens drill or side cutting drill, might be slip, medially or distally. So to avoid that situation, in this area, through this area, I use this trapine bar, inner diameter 
is 2.0 millimeter and outer diameter was 2.8. Smallest size of trap time bar. In this way, I could make an initial drilling point along the septile bone. And then 3.5 taper drill and 4.5 and 5.0 taper drill. And then 5.0 diameter implant was placed. As shown in this slide, I could place implant along the septile bone. Even though the top area, crystal portion of septile bone was so sharp and irregular. <laughs> like this. I could place in plant in ideal position. And <clears throat> this is a PA, periapical view after final prestige is delivery. Sorry. As shown in this PA, I could place in plant at the center of restorative crown along the septal bone. So in the upper jaw, you can use this method, this technique. In 2.6 area, left upper post molar area, I placed implant right after extraction. Here, two sectioning was done into three pieces, and then a traumatic extraction was done. I didn't open the plaque because this patient, this extraction socket was type 1 socket. So can you see very sharp and irregular septal bone? So here. This is a trapline bar. After using trapline bar, I could make a initial drilling like this along the septal bone at the center. And then final drilling was done and I placed the implant. Here, can you see? As shown in this PA, uh, sorry, as shown in this panorama, I could place the implant in ideal position. And also, in buccal lingual direction, I could place implant at the center middle. Three months later, final prosthesis was fabricated and delivered. Here, PA, and this is implant crown. The implant crown was so nice. So, until now, we talked about molar immediate implant placement. Please consider this immediate implant placement, especially when the extraction socket is type 1. Type 1 extraction socket. Immediate implant placement is best treatment modality, both in anterior and posterior area. And when managing the gap, please measure the gap size. More than 2 mm gap size area affect the bone, but allogenic bone or autogenous bone. We, you can have an autogenous bone with autobone collector in the lower jaw. By using the autobone collector in the lamus, we can have a particulated autogenous bone as I introduced in the second session. But upper jaw, if possible, you can you have a block type autogenous bone with the osenbine chisel from the maxillary tuberosity. Or if you don't want to have a the autogenous bone, you can use allogenic bone. So let's move on to type 2 and type 3 socket. If there is bone defect, type 2 or type 3 socket. That is type 2 or type 3 socket. So in the type 2 socket, sound soft tissue, but buccal bone defect. In this situation, we can place the implant immediately, but to regenerate it, buccal bone, we should do GBR. As you know, as I said before, the main disadvantage of immediate GBR after extraction is lack of soft tissue, so high exposure rate of barrier membrane during healing. To overcome that lack of soft tissue, we can use, we can consider this transmucosal GBR as I emphasized previous sessions with membrane, reservoir membrane, or smart builder. In the molar area, we can do this transmucosal GBR. So I showed this case in last session. Here, post-6 area. 
Can you see? We decided to extract this process, right, lower postmolar, and then I placed the implant immediately. But in the pre-op CVCT, there was buccal bone defect, pre-existing buccal bone defect. So this is a type 2 socket. So after extraction, I opened the plant and I placed the implant like this. So in this case, two make very thick buccal bone. As I said, to maintain the vertical bone level around the implant, the buccal bone thickness should be greater than 1.5 to 2.0 mm. So to regenerate thick buccal bone, I used the smart filter here. And also sandwich bone augmentation technique was done. To cover the exposed implant, this is allogenic bone graft material. And then outside, non-reservable genogenic bone to make thick buccal bone. And then this is smart filter. Smart Builder was placed to cover the entire graft material and then fixation of Smart Builder was done with healing cap and primary closure around healing abutment was done here. And this is the panorama and PA, sorry, this is CVCT. Smart Builder is contouring the ideal shape of valvular bone here. Four months after GBR with Smart Builder, Smart Builder was removed. I opened the flap and Smart Builder was removed. You can see beautiful bone regeneration. Yeah. It's a comparison before and after. So I like this transmucosal GBR because as Stephen, Stephen Chan said, bone augmentation procedure are more successful in combination with immediate and early placement. Why? We can maximize the success rate of bone regeneration when after performing after immediate implant placement or early implant placement. Why? During healing process of extraction socket, there must be sufficient amount of blood supply and bone points are supply. As I said, to maximize the success rate of bone regeneration, we should consider bone forming cell and signaling molecule blood. So during the modeling process of extraction socket, we can get sufficient amount of blood and bone forming cell. So supply, we can maximize success rate for that reason, in, for that point of view, immediate GBR is quite attractive. But by performing the transmucosal GBR, we can overcome the lack of soft tissue. And four months later, after removing the Smart Builder, final prostages was fabricated and delivered here. Yeah. Two years follow. Marginal bone was being maintained very well. Yeah. Here, PA. Let's compare. Before, immediate post-op, and two years follow. 